Well, you're back on Night Sounds, Barry and Joe, and there he is, Gary Hector's on the program. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Joe, man. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, respect. Where are you? Bar- Barbados? Is that where I... Well, uh, close enough. I, I am Trinidad and Tobago. So we're oh. we south, we south, south of Barbados. So it's Jamaica and Barbados and Antigua. And Tr- so it's a bunch of Caribbean islands. We are the furthest south, just off the South American coast, yeah. The best, the best Caribbean island, by the way. I will think so, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Joe were just talking about Vegas and how I'm staying in a hotel f- like far away from the Strip of Las right. Vegas, and, but I'm I get to take a bus b- to the right. Strip, so I'm not worried mm-hmm. about it. Is it like that on the islands? Is there like a like a transportation that you go like? Do you have to go like? Uh, mail your letters on another island or something like that? <laughs> well, well, not really. Well, well first, first of all, we have two islands. It's Trinidad and Tobago. It's a, it's a two-island mm-hmm. state, so there's a space between the both. But no, I don't know. It's pretty organized, yeah, man. I mean, we we use online, too. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going in cold. Like, yeah, that's far away that's for me. You know, you're on an island man, yeah. out there. Well, yeah, yeah man, I got yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I got a question then, because I think a lot of our listeners uh, probably aren't familiar with the music scene right, in yeah. your country, on your island. Tell us a little bit about that and what got you inspired to become a musician. Yeah, well, it's a very rich uh, music scene here because uh, remember we invented the Calypso and and whereas Jamaica have reggae, so Trinidad is, is the Calypso and the steel drum, steel pan, all that was invented right here, you know, so... So a lot of music involved, you know. So that's basically the scene. You'll get a lot. We have carnival, uh, a carnival celebration every uh, February, March, mm-hmm. there before Easter, and which it just went off, you know. So it's a full two day street parade with a lot of music going on, the indigenous music, just parties, parties, parties. Not with a real party island, you know. So. So what are you but, doing so, during during that time? Are you out partying or performing or both? <laughs> Yeah. Well, well. first of all, if you perform and you have to perform the music of the Calypso de Soca, which I, I don't do, you know, I I write, well, let's say Americana, I call it Trinicana, um, rock and roll type thing. So I'm not active during that period at all, you know, so I will go to the odd parties here and there and just check it out and just be part of the whole. I mean, the whole island is buzzing and bubbling over at that point, you know, it's just nonstop, you know. So that's the scene, really, you know, that anything else is basically underground rock and roll rap hip-hop it's all underground on top of the ground is basically the calypso and soca music you know yeah so how how long have you been doing this i i read back 2021 but has it older than how long have you been uh performing? Yeah, 2021, yeah 2021 is my solo my solo career basically you know i i've, I've been in bands before that for a long long time i've, I've been on a stage for like 40 years and I've been in two bands before, but my bands basically, you know, but I, um, I just went solo in 20, 20, 2019. It was the last time I was in a band. So I'm just on my own now, just following my own course, just walking my own path, you know. And of all your influences, you're going Memphis medicine, Southern yeah. twang. <laughs> Yeah. Where did that now? Why did you choose that road? Because you're it, it's lovely, it's such an elegant, like an interesting way to take the sound. What made you do well, it? The thing is, um, being a songwriter and so on, you know, I, I'm just following songwriting parts, you know. I mean, so my big thing, I'm a Dylan man, like I guess many of us are, you know, so and you, you would know Dylan had his country period too with, with Nashville Skyline and, and John Wesley Harding and all that. So so one, one, once I once I went solo, I, I choose that point to, to pursue the, the sort of country style songwriting, storytelling type things, you know, just, just sank a bit deep into Hank Williams and Graham Parsons or Loretta Lynn. So it was something I needed to check out as a songwriter. You know? So as this one is called Memphis Medicine, the last one was called Nash, um, National Trash. So it had a song on that called, yeah, that's me. I'm the National Trash. Yeah, so. <laughs> I wonder how it goes there when you play in front of the people. That's exactly how it from. goes. That, so National Trash was the concept of I am simply not National Treasure. It's all, 
underground, you know. So I mean, I mean, I do have a very loyal following here, you know. And and just they they did a lot of them followed me into this path now. Like, what is he doing, you know? So, but um, yeah. So I pick and choose now. Now I spread my concerts out between every six months or so and just chill and do it. You know, I'm not really on the underground scene running around no more, man. You know. Oh right, yeah. That's hard. <laughs> yeah, but that, to answer your question, it is a songwriting journey thing. I'm just checking out this. Uh, and uh, mind you, I've been discovering all this new Americana scene while while I'm doing it, just getting into all that Sierra Ferrell and all that stuff. You know. How do you find your Americana music? Where are you Where are you going? Uh, like, I assume the internet, but like, how do you get music? Well, that's a good. Uh, I I've been stumbling upon things since I sort of entered the scene. You know. As I keep telling people, it feels to me like I I found like a safe house with a bunch of spies in it. But this time, it's it's really like songwriters. Like, oh, so this is where you all were all the time hiding, you know. So I'm just stumbling upon all these things online and and just freaking out, checking it out, man. It's a lot of song singer songwriters, and it's basically a, you you gotta come good, man. You know, so. I love how you put headphones highly recommended on the songs that you, yeah, that you release. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah, all headphone yeah, jams, yeah. man. They're, it's just yeah. so interesting. So is there any slide guitars going on in that uh, album of yours? Are you that? Are you doing that thing yet? Yes. Yeah. 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 The, well, first of all, I recorded in, a, in America. The album was recorded in Connecticut. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I, I flew up there and stayed there for a week at a studio called Dirt Floor Studio. The owner is a guy called Eric uh, Lichter. He produced and uh, he's a multi instrumentalist too. So he played all the instruments, which was oh, wow. part of part of the reason going was because of that also. It's, so it's just the both of us just dealing with it, you know. But my my first solo album is full of pedal steel, played by a guy in Nashville. I never met him yet, but we real cool guy, and he just did what those modern day remote recordings kind of thing, you know. Mm. So yeah, he there's a lot of steel on the first one, and the, the new album there's maybe three songs of pedal steel. Yeah, man. You, you know, back in the day, you'd ask like a Dylan guy, you'd be like, yeah. "Hey man, where'd you get your influences from?" And he'd be like, "Yeah," hey, hey, hey. and he'd list like three, <laughs> four, you know, and then we'd be like, "Oh," and but nowadays you can like find these instrumentalists from a, anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. and match them up to your sound and it's like then how do you explain where you're what this is you know it's like yeah well it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that it's just so interesting to me that you you can't kind of hone in on anything anymore it's just so vast what you can yeah. do but that's the thing i mean back then doing the last album i i never worked like that in my life I, i'm i'm from a band environment so it's always the band in the studio Everything is packed up, coolers, beer, rum, a thing, be ready, it's like a big party. So being alone and having to work what they call remote and just trying to meet people online to record was very strange to me. It's not it's, I'm not used to having things out of my control, you know. It's, that, that was kinda weird, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's brand new territory. Does this take you around uh the world? Are you touring this? Are you going to like another country to play? I haven't toured I haven't toured since I've gone solo. Um, I just trying to build the repertoire because, uh, but I did a lot of touring with the past bands and so on. A lot of UK, UK touring all through Scotland, Wales, England. I did some America. I did some New York, and uh, I played CBGB. Oh, you know, nice! Yeah. Oh. Hey, that's close yeah, now. That's something that you used yeah, to. Yeah, I know. Do. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. So, so what? Yeah, so I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Uh, but the release of these new singles on the album and so on, could find myself on the road and start just. Picking out little cities to just keep strolling through, man. You know. Now that's what I was gonna say. Because if you start, if you do actually go viral, you're gonna have to tour <laughs> some, you know. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, man, before yeah, we yeah. go there, I want to ask you one more. Like, if okay, you could, sure. if you could take these songs and play anywhere in the world, like if you, if wow. nothing was out of your way and you can go mm -hmm. anywhere and do a tour, where would you take this? Memphis. Yeah, I was say, <laughs> yeah, man. Go right to oh. Tennessee, man. He could just yeah, do all the eyeballs with our friends. Memphis. This, this is something that you don't get every day, wow. you know. Yeah, the influences that you come from mixed with this, uh, m you know, 
Americana. It's a weird combination, but I love it. Now let's talk Trini. about well, we should, we should, yeah, we should just like connect the Trini dots Kana. so we can like go crash on the FBR's couch and then like play some shows with them and stuff. Right, right. and then you, you know a lot of people over there. Then you all come, you all come to Trinidad. We'll do the carnival. You get drunk in the streets, right? You know, I mean? know our Nashville friends will be like, "Wait, I can go to Trinidad and I gotta, I gotta come." Right, to so we got it. That'll be fun. We got it. Bed by nine thirty, so uh, carnival's probably. <laughs> We'll, 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 call it, we'll call it the Memphis Exchange Program. How's that? Right. There you go. So, Gary, you're waiting around to go viral. Where'd you come up with this song? Well, funny enough is um, the song basically is saying, I am not waiting around to go viral. I'm just watching the world waiting around to go viral, you know? So, well, first of all, it's a play on the town's fans and title of Waiting Around to Die. Right? So... I was reading a Towns Van Zandt book at the time and whatever. And um, so I just decided to play on the title. And what is the modern way of dying is going viral. To me, it's the same thing, you know. We're all waiting around to go viral. I just just observing the, the telephone culture, the phone culture, the cell phone, cell, the stick, stick, stuck, stuck, social media, social media, it's polite, like, comment, hashtag, 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 you know. And at the same time, that's how I met you guys. So. It's there, it's vital, it cuts it's important. Ways. It cuts yeah, both Exactly, ways. you know, so, so and that's so I try to put the song in a, in a... You can't let the tool take over your life. Though. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So it's all the, them things, you know, so I try to find a storytelling way of saying, hey, man, we just all living like this. What are we doing, you know, so, yeah. Well, let's play the song. Where can we reach you? Uh, when are you going to release a note? What's the next song and how do we get your music, Gary? Yeah, so uh, this this single is going to be out. Well, drops as they say <laughs> on April April third. So look on the floor for it yeah, when it drops, April third. And so I, I I have the album in hand, but I'm not rushing the full album release because I'm doing it independently too. So I'm I'm looking at a single every six weeks or so and just keep rolling it around, trying like to it. keep building the vibe. Yeah, drip strategy, man. You got to drip. Smart it yeah, I, I I understand it's called waterfall release. Yep. There you yeah, go. Waterfall works. release. Yeah. So um, the next one I'm thinking is going to be like Rise and Shine from the album. But and I will just keep sending you guys stuff to check it out one by one and just see how it goes and just keep rolling this stuff around, you know. So yeah, keep yeah. it up, man. Use, use and, and, and it's available on all those streaming platforms and so on: Spotify, Apple, and da da da. And yeah, so it's there. I love it. Well, c please come back, Gary Hector, when you uh, release the next single. We'll see you in five yeah, and a half man. weeks. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If anything yeah. crazy happens in your life, be sure to let us know. We'll talk about we'll it. Will do. Will do. Will do. Breast up. Yeah, man. All right. Thanks, Gary Hector, everybody. Thanks yeah. for coming on Night Sound. Thanks for having me, guys. Respect.